This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue to look at Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we turn now to the humanitarian implications of what could become the largest war in Europe since World War II. We go now to Jan Egland, the secretary general of the Norwegian Refugee Council, recently in eastern Ukraine, but he's joining us now from Oslo, Norway. Uh, Jan, welcome back to Democracy Now!, humanitarian groups Groups like yours have warned of a major crisis for millions of people in Ukraine. You're just back from there. What are your concerns? Well, what is unfolding now is the ugliest of scenarios. A uh, cruel uh, military onslaught is now engulfing millions, uh, in, especially in the east, along this front line that is going straight through the communities of Luhansk and Donetsk. But also, from the north, from the south, uh, there are military attacks. So hundreds of thousands of uh, Ukrainians will now be displaced, uh, and, 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 and millions are actually now uh, in some kind of a crossfire. It, it couldn't be worse. What was your response um, last night, early this morning, as the invasion unfolded, as the U.N. secretary, uh, as the U.N. Security Council was meeting? Well, I, I was woken up uh, very, very early this morning uh, because uh, of the reports from my colleagues, the aid workers in the field in, in Ukraine. Uh, and, and, of course, it's, it was disbelief, because nobody thought that it, that the world would be so senseless that uh, that there would be a, an attack of this size, an invasion, uh, it it will lead to untold suffering uh, in Ukraine, but also uh, refugee flows in the region as such. People will flee to Poland, to Hungary, Romania, Moldova, to and to Russia. Uh, it's it's uh, there is also a lot of suffering in the self-declared so-called republics in the in the in the east these are people who will flee uh, to to russia uh, they have unleashed something that will have untold uh, consequences untold suffering so you also have um, this movement, for example, of U.S. troops uh, from Italy moving up, landing in Latvia. Um, you've got the situation in Poland. Now there has to be deconfliction because uh, you could have NATO forces coming face to face with Russian forces. Can you explain that to lay people what that means? Well, of course, deconfliction is something we're also doing as humanitarians. It, it's basically that uh, that that anyone tells the other opposing side where they are. Uh, we have deconflicted um, uh, our sides now with the Russians and with uh, the Ukrainian army. They know where there are humanitarian sites. They will not be attacked. We hope and believe. But uh, listen, it the story is the civilian suffering. The people who are engulfed by this fighting, who are in crossfire, are, to a large extent, elderly people. These are pensioners that are living on a, on a meager minus pension, uh, or they're widows. Uh, they, I, I was in outposts along the front line just two weeks ago. One of these places, Opitne, there were 37 souls. Uh, average age must have been 75 years in this place. Several said, we're sick. Uh, they have cancerous, uh, you know, uh, husbands uh, cannot move. I'm thinking of, of, of them now. They are bearing the brunt of this suffering that was unleashed by people who sit in, in heated offices in the Kremlin and elsewhere and do not understand the suffering that they are causing. Can you talk about um, the possibility of this getting, I mean, as if Ukraine isn't difficult enough, so much broader? Do you think, for example, your neighbors, um, Finland, Sweden, would possibly consider, their leaders are saying no at this point, but consider joining NATO as a result of this, Putin strengthening NATO, as opposed to what he would like to see, which is to abolish it? And there are many peace activists in the world who would also like to see that. 
Well, I mean, there, there is a lot of people saying Europe has changed uh, overnight. Um, the, I, 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 what I hope is that instead of a, a of, of a continued escalation, continued military escalation, and and a willingness to use untold billions of rubles uh, and now also billions of dollars on military escalation, that there will be an escalation, a surge of diplomatic action. I cannot believe that people are so senseless that they will take themselves and their people down in this. I think there is still a hope for a ceasefire, that there will be uh, also investment in the humanitarian operation. Because, Amy, we had 9% of the funding for the ongoing humanitarian operation before the invasion. Now that needs are have grown tenfold. Will we get the funding we need to provide for those who flee? I don't know. I, I hope I hope we will at, at least get a fraction of what the militaries so easily are getting now across the world. So the U.S. has just pulled out of Afghanistan. You have warned of the devastation of this country after decades of war. I'm talking about Afghanistan. And now yeah. we're seeing Ukraine. Uh, can you make some comparisons here and where the world's wealth should be going as billions are now being poured into this conflict? Yeah, we, the, 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 first, we're really Overstretch. I cannot remember in my 40 years as a humanitarian worker a, a period where we were as overstretched as we are now. Uh, the, the, uh, the Afghan mega crisis, the Syrian mega crisis, the Yemeni mega crisis, the Congo, uh, the Sahel, and so on. And now, on top of that, this meaningless war in, in Ukraine that will affect millions, not hundreds of thousands, many millions. Now, um, of course, it's, it's Europe. So I think some of those countries who will receive refugees would have resources to care for the people. This is not Afghanistan, where people uh, lost the one dollar a day they were surviving on. But there will be also a, a lot of suffering here. And, and, and there has really not been investment in humanitarian operations in Ukraine. That's why the preparedness is not as good as it should have been to meet new uh, waves of, uh, of displacement. My colleagues on the ground are telling about panic, about disbelief of fear. People do not know what to do, where to flee, how to, how to get out of uh, harm's way. Many of our colleagues on the ground have relatives, parents on the other side of, of the front lines. These are now divided societies. What do you think has to happen now, Jan? Well, we're still saying it's not too late to end this before the millions start to, to flee. What I hope is that there is a, it's a ceasefire. Uh, listen, it's, it, it does it, is it naive? Uh, I hope not. We cannot accept this, uh, this, this thing becoming, as people are saying, the biggest war in the history of Europe since the Second World War. Why does it have to come to that? And if, if it comes to that, we would all live to regret it. Uh, so there has to be urgent phone calls to President Putin and sa saying, stop it. It can be stopped. I, 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 I don't think that the sanctions will, will stop this uh, short term. Uh, it is diplomatic initiatives that could start uh, stop this short term. In Norway right now, uh, the place where the Nobel Peace Prize is given out, um, what hmm. is the response to what's taking place right now? And what would you like to see? I'll ask you the same question I asked Anatole Levin of the Quincy Institute just a minute ago. President Biden's addressing the nation today. The U.N. is a powerful force right now um, in the response to Russia and what's happening in Ukraine. What do you want him to say? Oh, I, I hope he'll say, I'm, I'm uh, going to call uh, Putin today uh, to talk with him directly. 
they, they, they talk to each other now through the international media. Uh, it, it's, it's not good. I hope uh, uh, that President Biden will also be leading in a, a, a forceful humanitarian response, humanitarians being underfunding, militaries having a lot of hardware. Uh, I, I, and, I, and I hope there will be a, 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 a maybe also reaching out to China and others that can influence uh, Russia. A diplomacy must, must uh, be on our, uh, our, the, the first actor here. Uh, along with us humanitarians. We're not leaving uh, Ukraine. We are there. We will remain and stay and deliver in the hour of greatest need of U U Ukrainians. We also need help. Uh, in, in Norway, of course, we've lived with Russia as a neighbor in the far north, a good neighbor now, every single day since they withdrew the Red Army uh, when the Nazis were, were, were beaten in 1945. Uh, so, in our neighborhood, we have good relations. Uh, there has to be the same uh, understanding that war is something of the past, shouldn't happen in, in Europe, in Ukraine, in 2020. Jan Egeland, we want to thank you for being with us, Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, speaking to us from Oslo, Norway. Next Thanks. up, we go to Greece to speak with the former finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, of the Progressive International, about what the Russian invasion means for Europe. Stay with us.